Hello and welcome to Jabot's News for February 29th, 2024. My name is Greg Driscoll and today we will be, recover be covering Zendejas, huge donation, a permit workshop, and Evan's top five. In entertainment news, Paula will tell you all about Beyonce's making history. In sports news, Diana has the latest updates on the high tickets prices to see Lionel Messi in action. All that and more coming up in today's edition of Chabot News. Actress and Oakland native Zendaya is donating $100,000 to the California Shakespeare Theater in Orinda which she says helped start her career. The 27-year-old attended Oakland School for the Art and is, now, is known for her starring roles in Euphoria and Spider-Man. Cowshake says the donation will allow to upgrade lighting and sound systems, enhance the cafe, and fund a 50th anniversary production of As You Like It. It can be devastating for an owner when the pet goes missing for scammers are making profit off of the vulnerability of pet owners during those times. Three-year-old poodle mix Mia got loose in Oakland after posting about Mia being missing. A call came through to Creighton in Antioch on Monday. The phone number appeared it was from the city shelter. The caller said, they had an injured Mia. Mia's owner said she knew something was off, but it was when they asked for her to send a payment that she knew it was a sign that it was all a scam. Red flags also included a suspicious invoice sent to refusing to send photo of Mia's microchip number. No money was exchanged in the owner's case and now we go to Paula with entertainment news. Thanks, Greg. Beyonce made history Tuesday when her new song, Texas Hold'em, debuted in the top spot for Billboard's Hot Country Song Charts. This makes her the first woman to have topped both the Hot Country and Hot R&B Hip Hop Song Charts since the list began in 1958. 16 Carriages, a second single on her upcoming country album, ranks number nine on the chart. We sent a reporter Christian out on campus to ask students and staff about what they think about Beyonce's accomplishments. I'm for it. You know, she's from Texas. You know, she's from the South. So, and she's, you know, from one of the main cities that do produce a lot of country music. So I feel like it's good. Like, I'm just happy for her. I hope everyone went in. I'd say it's actually good for her because no one, not one artist should actually just stay in one um, genre. They should just explore and and what they know they can do. That's a good, good thing, you know. I guess if people do that more to the time, like actresses or singers, I think to share their their music, I think that would be a good thing. I'm so proud of her. I love her so much. I, I just think that um, she has it in her to do it all. Why not? And she's giving hope to everybody else um, who are already, she's paving the pathway for all of these um, young artists, um, African American artists who are coming forward and she's just paving the way, so I'm so proud of her. I think Beyonce puts her whole entire heart and soul into everything that she does and her topping both country and R&B kind of proves that. Thanks Christian. Beyonce dropped both her new songs during Super Bowl 58. Wendy Williams' loved ones opened up opened up for the first time about the former talk show host's recent health struggles. Williams' sister and niece told People Magazine she is in a facility to treat her cognitive issues. William has been diagnosed with progressive aphasia and frontal temporal dementia. While they aren't able to reach out to her at the facility, they said that she contacts them often and seems to be doing much better. On an upcoming Lifetime documentary chronicles a particularly difficult period for the 59-year-old whose talk show ended in 2022. On the heels of her erratic onset behavior and news, she was struggling with addiction and health issues. 
The documentary, Where is Wendy? premieres on 20, 24th, February 24th. I'm Paula Katakataka, and now back to Greg Wishabo News. Thanks, Paula. Wanting to start a club for look, or looking for help with certificates to bow? Chabot College ECD Professional De Development Coordinator, Miss Lee, is providing workshops in the next months. Miss Lee provides help with knowing qualifications and how to apply an upcoming workshops with being helping, will being helping happening on March 9th, 2024, from noon to 1 p.m. with a deadline registration of March 7th, 2024, by 5 o'clock p.m., the meeting will be held online and will be starting on time. This works out will be amazing opportunities for any and all students needing any assistance with permits and certificates. Interested in learning more about microbiology and immunology? Well, you're in luck. The STEM Center is having speakers throughout the spring semesters for STEM majors and anyone who's interested. Through February's speakers events had already happened, the, the event will be happening on March 14th, 2024. Adjunct faculty with Chabot Science and Math Div Division, Elsie Grassi Soyster will be talking about microbiology and immunology. The STEM speakers will be located in room 3902 starting at noon. Sony's PlayStation might be one of the most popular video game systems, but that hasn't shielded the company from laying off staff. Today, Tuesday, the, the company said it's slashing about 900 jobs in a note that staff Sony's, Sony's CEO cited the evolving economic landscape and the, the company's need to focus on longer term substantiality to ensure continued success in the U.S. Layoffs will hit major PlayStation studios, including Naughty Dog, Insomniac, and Guerrilla Games. And several PlayStation studios will close, including one in London. We sent our reporter Jasmine Bester out to look, out to ask Chabot students about the staff and staff about their opinions on, this, on Sony laying off employers in their PlayStation division, here's what they had to say. I feel like that's sad. Like any employee lo losing a job, based off of no matter what you do, just losing a job here. I feel like that's wrong. Um, that's the trend right now with all of the technology. They're laying off um, a lot of people right now because I think people are purchasing PlayStation. AI I know is getting really popular nowadays and taking a lot of people's jobs. And I see an in, 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 uh, artificial intelligence in a kid. It was a robot, but it was a kid, and it scared me because he was being a babysitter for a kid. But the thing I realized, there were no emotions. He was teaching him everything it was, but it was no emotions. I think it puts a harder... It weighs down the company and kind of puts pressure on game developers to overexert themselves playing, like, creating games and doing all the different... Uh, things to build games. Thanks, Jasmine. Are you surprised that yet another big corporation is laying off their employees? Could uh, uh, artificial intelligence be the reason behind the recent layoffs? Here's a, here is a story AI couldn't make up. A Michigan man went on a ski trip hoping to see a moose but he got more than he bargained for when one moose started chasing him down the, the slope. CNN's Jenny Moose tracks the, the moose on the loose. 
They haven't yet been caught riding the chairlift, but moose seem to be hanging out these days at ski resorts out west. So maybe it was the next best thing to skiing. Moose, heads up. When a moose at Jackson Hole Resort in Wyoming right on, chased right a skier down the slope. Were you scared or not really? It's a shock. Ken Reinierson and his buddies turned a bend and there it was. Billy actually almost landed on the thing. And then we both were like, oh my God, a moose. Ken thought it was a great photo op until the moose headed for it. <laughs> Ken picked up his speed to leave the moose in his tracks. Go faster! He yelled to warn a friend in the green pants. Meanwhile, Ken's buddy Alex was shooting his own video. Man, I got red on. Like a matador tempting a bull, we've seen moose get aggressive, ramming a truck, then chasing it. Get out of here. Hitting a moose can be dangerous for both parties. Did you actually have a hoof print on your face? Right up there. But right before Ken got to the base of the mountain, the moose veered off into the woods. When Dr. Ken left his East Bay chiropractic office in Traverse City, Michigan to go skiing, he had high hopes. So one of my goals was to see a moose and get hopefully a video or at least a photo. And I got, got it all. But was this a wild moose chase or did the moose just want to join in? Maybe it's not just girls. As one commenter wrote, moose just want to have fun. Genimo, CNN, New York. Thanks, Jenny. I'll, I can definitely say being chased by a moose here would be a change your shorts kind of moment. Next time, don't wear red. And now we go to Evan with his top five. Hello, I'm Evan Neto, and I'll be sharing the top five most visited vacation spots in the U.S. We start things off with fifth place. It's not San Diego, Honolulu, or some other beach town. It's actually quite the opposite, Denver. This came as a surprise to me because I'm not too sure what's actually there, but needless to say, there must be something. Otherwise, people wouldn't go. Personally, it's always just been a big Reno to me, but if you like nature and mountains, then Denver should be your go-to destination. New York City comes in at number four, and the Big Apple apparently fell too far from the tree because it's rounding out the lower half of this list. And it's hard to see why. It's the biggest city in the U.S. and full of things to do, ranging from nightlife to cultural pursuits. Not to mention, it's arguably one of the most famous cities in the world. Just not famous enough, apparently. Las Vegas came in at number three, and it's obviously why it ranks so high. It has casinos, shows, shopping, an amazing downtown, surprisingly affordable hotels, and more casinos. It even has trails if you're into those. In second place is Anaheim, the home of Disneyland. And I'm going to be honest, I had to Google that. I was like, Anaheim? Why? There's nothing there. Apparently I was wrong, and with this close proximity to Disneyland, Anaheim is a prime vacation spot. What can I say? Some people are Disney freaks. They go to Disneyland again and again and again and again. But I'm not judging. It is the happiest place on earth. And keeping up with the Disney theme, Orlando takes the top spot. It might be in the middle of a swamp filled with alligators, leeches, and giant mosquitoes, but it's also home to, you guessed it, Disney World. More Disney. It's the happiest swamp on earth, and while New York's rats drive people away, Orlando's mice attract them in droves. Orlando also contains Universal Studios as well, and sits on the highly populated East Coast. That was the U.S.'s top five most visited destinations. Once again, I'm Evan Neto. Now, back to you, Greg. Thanks, Evan. Victor Webb and Yama made history on Friday evening, February 23rd, joining an exclusive club by posting a 5x5 five five stat line. The French rookie filled up this box score during, an, during his, San, Jose, his San, San Antonio Spurs 123-118 defeat to the Los Angeles Lakers, finishing with 27 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists, 5 steals, and 5 blocks in just 31 minutes. He became the 15th player to log a 5x5 five five stat line where players could re record at least 5 points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks in a single game. And Webby Yama became the youngest 
to ever achieve the feat. According to the NBA, the star rookie at 20 years and 50 days old broke the previous record of 22 years and 20, 288 days set by Andre Kirilenko since the league began tracking steals and blocks in 1973-74. Webinyama is seen as the future of the NBA. For more on sports, we go to Diana with this week's sports report. The Oakland A's have made a new acquisition during the offseason, but this time it's in the booth, not on the field. There is another Major League Baseball announcer in the Correa family. NBC Sports California has named Chris Correa as a play-by-play -play announcer for its live game coverage of the Oakland athletes. He is now the fourth generation of his family to serve as a play-by-play -play announcer, following in the footsteps of his father Chip, his grandfather Skip, and his great-grandfather Harry. Most recently, Chris Correa, along with his twin brother Stefan, did the play-by-play -play for the Arizona Diamondbacks AA affiliate, the Armorallo Sod Poodles. He will be joining Jenny Canavar, who is the network's primary play-by-play -play voice over A's coverage. Chris Correa and his brother Stefan have big shoes to fill. His great-grandfather alone broadcast over 8,300 games during his 53-year career. Sorry, soccer fans, but Messi Manet is still here, and that means you will need to pay up if you want to see the soccer legend on the pitch. The Major League Soccer season will kick off Wednesday, and Messi's intern Miami will face the Real Salt Lake. This will be Messi's first full season with Miami after joining the team late last season. The, the average price for tickets for Wednesday's game is about $185. Last year, the tickets cost about $27. That means prices have jumped about 585%. Messi may be bringing in new fans to the sports as StubHub says it has seen sales for all 29 teams increase this year. Inter Miami is the most in-demand MLS team followed by Los Angeles Galaxy and the new Revelation. That's it for this week's report. Back to Greg. Thanks, Diana. With a partial government shutdown looming at the end of the of next week's House, leaders are discussing an agreement that would provide extra nu nutrition assistance for new moms and young children, addressing one big sticking point in the federal funding negotiation but the possible deal is already facing a lot of criticism for advocates and businesses for the trade-off. It would involve a pilot program that would limit the items that food stamps participants could buy. The potential agreement would provide more money for WIC, the food assistance program for millions of low-income pregnant women, new mothers, infants, and young children. That is facing a $1 billion shortfall that could cut aid to about 2 million people. House Republicans have proposed cutting funding for the, the program, but soaring enrollment prompted the White House to ask for additional $1.4 billion for fiscal year 2024 to avoid having to initiate wait lists for benefits and first time since the, the late 1990s. The Biden administration is now requesting $1 billion to address the current shortfall. That's all for Chabot News this week. Thanks to all the students and staff in the mass communications department here at Chabot College for making this production possible. You can watch us anytime online at youtube.com slash Chabot TV. Stay tuned to KCTH channel 27 on Comcast for more Chabot TV.